Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another product from Danbridge. Denmark. CLR Bridge CT10. This is definitely a professional CLR a bridge for a larger companies that's like making inductors or capacitors or buying large quantities for products or something like that. I mean, look at this thing. It is huge. And we got all the coolest sized displays for showing actual values, compared values. It can show all sorts of differences. It can sort things. It can say how many percent it's off the limits. And yeah, yeah, all those kinds of things. This is not something a regular electronic dude would have in his own lab. It's just way too big. And it's just not fitting like my regular lab you can see you can't stack it you you need a whole table for this thing so that's definitely what it is uh used for right <laughs> let's check out the connectivity here in the back see you can even change the voltage to us or europe voltage Got some funky connectors here, and that is the RS232. And in the same size connector, so you could accidentally plug in stuff wrong. How about that? That is one silly, silly mistake. This one should have been a DB9, obviously. Got some information here about how to use this connector. The pins are doing this or that. So I kind of like the idea. We have uh, some information uh, written here. I also got um, some user guides and manuals and service manuals and everything like that. We just uh, scanned it. Uh, I got half of it and Peter got the other half of it. So it will be uploaded um, to peel.dk as we speak. I will put some links in the description. So if you happen to have anything like this, you can find all the information. There's another cool thing about this tester here. So this is a regular way to plug in capacitors real fast. They made this so it connects to two points for highest accuracy and it's like super easy to plug. Then you can adjust these into different position. You can have them either way. Got both of the points down here. It goes all the way up through this system. Look at those extra blades. It's just top quality and you can also plug in capacitors or resistors or inductors or whatever directly here between these. See it? It's a four point connection for highest accuracy. I also like we have the most important things. Of, of course you need to read the manual, understand how it works and what it can do and all that kind of thing. But just so you can remember on the on your daily work what to do, then they have a little fast remember this and remember that kind of thing printed directly on the front. Isn't that just nice? But like I promised, we need to open and inspect before we power up. Oh, mega bummer. So when I try to lift the lid off, See, I pulled out all the glass displays. They kind of got, you know, there's this sticky rubber or foam. So all the displays kind of pulled up. So, how the heck? This is, of course, mains. And there isn't any... Wait, what the heck is that? What is going on here? What the? So the first thing that I 
saw when I took off the the lid here. There was a little metal part on the circuit board. And where the heck is that coming from? And then I see here's a little screw. And see, there's a nut missing as well. So I'm looking for a nut as well. So that is one of the good 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 reasons for doing a um visual inspection before you power up stuff. I mean what can happen if you have a little nut that's floating around somewhere, right? So I need to go and find that one. But what do you think about this? Some pins here are, well, not wanted for some reason. And what have we got here? TMS 9980. So that's an 8-bit uh, microcontroller. Um, it's a actually a CPU, not a microcontroller, uh, because they got all the software and IOs and all that stuff inside. This one is a CPU, so you got the RAM and you got the program memory here in EEPROMs, and you got an external TMS 9901. So this is a, a systems interface chip, and that's doing. Uh, making your I.O. Uh, pins and timer pins and all those kinds of things. And um, we got some relays and this little display in a socket. Quite a lot of uh, different ICs and uh, analog stuff. The keypad got its own little keypad IC for delivering the a binary code instead of you so you're not scanning anything this one is doing the scan we got all those chips here driving the um, LCD displays and uh, yeah those are the ones that I took out uh, they <laughs> accidentally took out that was definitely not my intention and these two I need to see if I can get the pins into the sockets without breaking anything and I think we got a little hinge here, so I think I can, can maybe bend or flip this up, but it's not really coming loose. So there's maybe a screw somewhere that will fix this. I think I already figured this out. We got a screw here and here on the back. And now I can lift up everything, both the screen board. I want to hold it here. Oops, here's another problem. So those connectors here, whoa, they just barely touch. Is that really it? Oh my god. A lot more electronics in this unit. I see a lot of uh, fix this and fix that all over the place. And that will be another input output chip controlled by the software so the idea is I lift this one a little bit and then I lift the other board over this part here and then we can flip it all the way up like that and um, the bottom side of the main board is just one big oops this and oops that. I really think we have a internal development or a prototype or something like that here, right? This can't be the regular products they make and sell, right? I've seen quite a lot of uh, Danbit uh, products over the years and uh, I can reveal to you this is definitely not the first time I see their stuff looks a little bit like this. So um, yeah, I wasn't super duper surprised to be honest. That would be the test connector and one of them is a fixed one. See this is soldered but the other one is the moving part. So that is, of course, with some springs and stuff like that. And over here, oops, 
both of them they're moving so i need to solder this but why is it only soldered in this little tiny drop in each side like that mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think about this yeah and that will be of course the main transformer with dual voltage setting a uh, bridge rectifier capacitor and a voltage regulator and that will probably be a five volt yeah it is five volt so this is where all the main current uh, power consumption is uh, power is wasted here right and uh, we got some more voltage regulators yeah well 12 volt but it's also running on some negative voltages and uh, as far as I know, this uh, CPU is running on three different voltages. Yeah, happy 80s. I have done a lot of uh, clean up, a uh, little paintbrush and some compressed air and all that. I feel I'm ready to try the first uh, power up. I also resoldered uh, the brass connections here. So now they are all uh, nice and fine for so, so far. I tried to push in uh, relays and ICs in the sockets and all that. So uh, let's see. That is not too bad. I don't have anything connected. I want to show you the display and the test socket here at the same time. So this is 470 nano if i'm not completely mistaken and uh what do you think about that <laughs> and i as you see i didn't touch anything i didn't zero anything i didn't do anything at all i am super duper happy of course i need to consult um the manual and uh, see what everything here is explaining and all that but i think this is the loss factor and this will show the quality of that component and i think this is the accuracy so if it's jittering or if it's changing or something like that right see if i i don't know let's try another one with a much different loss factor or i mean, I mean how can it say how accurate it is i don't how can it know this Hmm. Well, that's interesting. It's the same, right? Okay, I know this value is a little bit higher. Ooh. So if it's not connected, and yes, that one has a higher loss. And that I also know. Wow, I'm quite happy. It looks like it's working. What a nice day. So it's auto detecting everything so, so i don't need, need to do anything i mean i can just grab a random 1k resistor right and let's just stick this in and see what it says haba haba look at that 1k <laughs> but I, I don't understand this so i need to put in some things out oh what is this uh -huh, it's because there is no reactive so it's just going absolutely bananas about the re reactive uh, component uh, it's experimenting ah oh, there is no uh, this or that and of course it's gonna go like that right yeah i just turned it on again just to show you what happens it uh, kind of loses its um calibration it's zero calibration at power up so what you do is you don't have anything connected and you, then you say capacitor zero now it stores the zero value for capacitor and you're ready to go so now you can plug in your uh, 100 uh, picofarad and then you go like that right so now we are in um, in auto mode and it automatically figures out what you want so as far as i understand you can change between q factor here or 
how good it is. So this is this is the relationship of uh, its reactive part and its uh, serious resistive part. So this one should be as close to zero as possible, and this one should be as high as possible. But it's more or less the same thing, right? So the SP. Okay, so it's serious or parallel. So that is, of course, the same in this case. So uh, you can also click the R and G. And now it will say the serious resistance. Yeah, that's exactly how it is. So this is the serious resistance. Oh, it's, why is it not? What did I do wrong here? Did I screw this up? Okay, so that has something to do with the the time factor. That's interesting. And of course, this is because it's only testing at one kilohertz, as far as I understand. So that is, of course, it cannot test that at uh, these really, really low values like 100 picofarad. But let's go back to a 470 nano. See, now my serious resistance is uh, very, very low, obviously, as it's uh, supposed to be. And then you can go to the D, and then you can go to Q, and now Q is just hammering up, because now it can measure all that. And uh, that was serial or parallel. So that is, of course, the parallel um, resistor over the... I mean, that should be, of course, insanely high. But if there is leakage, it's should it can also measure that, right? So you can go back to Sirius, and then it goes like that. I mean, I, I totally love this unit. I must say that it's really, really uh, fantastic. So again, let's uh, check out uh, another 470 nano. So this one is a more accurate when it comes to the capacitance value. And here is the Q factor. Or the RS is very low. So let's try another capacitor that has a little bit serious resistance. It's again more or less the same value. But look at that. A lot of serious resistance. So that means when you look at the Q factor, it is very low. And that is simply because of that. Quite interesting. Let's try something more funny. Let's try a little inductor. So this is, should be a one milli Henry inductor, a tiny little DC uh, filter inductor. So look what it's doing now, because the Serious resistance is very, very high. It's now showing that in the left display first. And then you have the inductance right here. It's serious inductance to your resistor. Isn't that a little bit uh, fascinating? But if I, I am now in auto mode, right? So let's take out this inductor and take another one. So this is a another one milli inductor. And now the value goes over here and my Q factor is over here. And I can, of course, go to serious resistance. And it is now quite low for this inductor. I think that is very, very fascinating how it's always showing you exactly what you want to know in a very, very nice, easy and readable, understandable way. I mean, the more I play with this, the, the more I fall in love with it. I, I just have to say that. I think I'm done playing with this fantastic instrument for tonight. There's only a little bit of things that I found. I need to fix this uh, foam here and cut it a little bit so I can see some more of the displays here. But other than that, it's uh, definitely something I will find a lot of fun and joy using. So. Uh, Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you had a little bit of fun. See you around. Bye-bye.